Good day, mate. This is QD Clinic, and I'm Jack Cush. QD Clinic is brought to you by Rheumatology Roundup 2020, only on Room Now. It's going to be a week from today, next Monday night, the 9th at 7 p.m. If you're a rheumatologist, sign up. We're going to send you a webinar invite on Zoom. Everyone else can watch it on our webpage or watch it streamed live on YouTube. Today's case is HIV and joint pain. 27-year-old man presents to the clinic. He has a history of HIV. Um, he's currently on HRT therapy. He's got a problem of iron deficiency anemia that's not yet resolved and uh, hasn't been fully worked up. A year ago, he presented with acute knee swelling that took a number of weeks to go away. And then he, for a while, developed an oligoarticular migratory arthritis, mainly large and medium-sized joints kind of moved around, ultimately responded to um, non-steroidals, and now he's doing fine, although he has lingering wrist pain. Happens that his wrist was a place where he previously had damage from an injury, but now it hurts. It was previously swollen. Is it the old injury? Is it the new thing? The wrist isn't really the issue. The issue here is what's the cause of his joint pain, and what's the role of the anemia? So I think there's several things that should jump out at you at this kind of story that helps you to formulate a differential diagnosis. Number one, HIV. What are the possibilities there? Two, joint pain. And remember, I said it was migratory. Hmm. And then lastly, we have this sort of GI issue on the table. Let's go through these bit by bit. First, HIV. The first thing you should think of is, well, actually, HIV people get the same kind of arthritis that everybody gets at the same rate. So there's, you know, they're allowed to get gout and rheumatoid arthritis and polymyositis just like anybody else. There are a few things that the HIV positive population may get that the regular population does not. Number one would be HIV agents, meaning the protease inhibitors and these current HRT therapy. These actually are quite notorious for causing arthralgias um, um, myalgias, autoimmune disease, inflammatory arthritis, uh, again, drug-induced rheumatic syndromes, you should certainly be thinking of HIV uh, drugs. This uh, gentleman's on Bictarvi, Bictar which is a new combination one, and, and this is one of the warnings in there. If he continue to have joint pains and problems on this drug, then like all other drug-induced syndromes, you should stop the drug. Uh, next, HIV. Those of you who've been around long enough know that um, HIV patients uh, are notorious for getting reactive arthritis, something we don't see much of anymore. But they also get psoriasis and psoriatic arthritis. They can also get IBD. They can also get inflammatory arthritis directly related to HIV. They get um, this uh, DILS, diffuse um, infiltrative lymphocytosis or lymphadenopathy syndrome. They basically look like a Sjogren's syndrome, and uh, that's kind of odd. They can get myopathy, myositis, hypersensitivity vasculitis, and obviously uh, other infections. So there's quite a differential diagnosis. I mean, right now, this gentleman, the way he's behaved, he's more like a reactive arthritis than anything else, and maybe uh, he has IBD for reasons we'll talk discuss next. Um, why IBD? Well, again, it's in the differential. Um, there is a dependency on CD8 positive T cells like there is with reactive arthritis and psoriatic arthritis. So there might be a little bit more IBD going on here. He does have a history, one episode of proctitis, and he has this unexplained iron deficiency anemia for which he needs to go and get further GI workup. I mean, he has a very, very low MCV and he is anemic right now. And he's 27 and healthy and really not taking non-steroidals right now. He takes non-steroidals intermittently if and when he does get joint pain. So yes, he could have GERD and upper GI bleed or gastritis or esophagitis, but he could also have occult IBD. So they're probably gonna start with an upper and then maybe go to lower endoscopy to further assess this gentleman. And then lastly, you know, migratory disease. You should certainly think the classic one, rheumatic fever, he does not have. Uh, gonococcal arthritis and chlamydia arthritis uh, notorious for uh, migratory ar arthropathy in a young male. Um, other viral arthritis, probably the leading one these days would be uh, hepatitis B. So, you know, he's had hepatitis testing, those were negative. Um, uh, he hasn't been tested for rheumatic fever, doesn't seem appropriate at this point. 
but you should certainly use that migratory label as uh, something that you formulate. So the next steps are a GI workup to understand this, both his anemia and whether it could be some IBD. He's now a symptomatic management uh, person, meaning he gets non-steroidals and that's about it. Steroids generally don't work in reactive arthritis or in this kind of arthritis unless you want to inject a, a joint or two. Uh, patients with bad um, uh, recalcitrant uh, polyarthritis, you can go on and use the same drugs you would use in RA, methotrexate, you know, cyclosporin, TNF inhibitors. There's really uh, no uh, hazard uh, of using more aggressive therapy if aggressive therapy were warranted, although it's not warranted here. That's it for this episode of QD Clinic. Tune in for more.